what they both do. Shane and Tick just loping along in a nice, easy style. And he's leaning forward. Another uh, runner I can go a little bit more upright. Looking very strong there. Just saw they're running through Newstead. On their way back into the city. And then they run out through to Wong, St Lucia. Before eventually uh, turning and heading back towards the finish. Interesting to note, Shahanga continually looking at the watch. I suppose there's a tendency for us to think the way the black African runners do compete in a very loose style and accelerating, decelerating, that they virtually go out with, without a race plan. But obviously from Shahanga's constant check of the watch, he has a race plan very much in mind. Yes, it is interesting, Tim, because uh, uh, it is felt that these African runners have got a great natural uh, ability in their running and uh, they just run as they feel and for this reason sometimes in uh, track events you'll to see them suddenly slow down and cause a bunch up behind in a track race and then off they go and accelerate again and of course your hanger in the 10,000 meters showed us just how he does he feels a little tired slow down and then he feels good again and off he goes but uh, as you point out it is interesting to see him continually referring to the watch as he has done right throughout the course of the run so far it's also interesting to know there too uh, watch there heard was uh, Shahanga had a good look around just to see what sort of a break they'd got on their field and he uh, had a bit of uh, uh, say a few words to Ikanga so obviously they're running as a team and he's probably said you know we've, we've, we've got a good break there let's keep it going and try and break this field up and uh, of course you know if they get a, a really good break it's going to be hard for uh, these other boys just to uh, to get up there with them if they have to keep it going and yes. the crisis point will probably come at around about 20 miles because that's when they might start to feel the, the effects of this cracking pace as you can see that gap's very wide still no sign uh, a moment ago of the main group appearing from around that bend as Akanga number 623 and Shahanga 629 pilot the field by a considerable margin in the marathon just beyond the one hour mark we're up to 63 minutes it must be getting reasonably close to the halfway mark by now We'll be almost right on it. It'll be interesting. 103.48 was the time that uh, De Costello went through and halfway mark in Fugioka. So uh, um, it'll be interesting to see what the time is at the halfway mark. Look at that gap. Still no sign of the pack of four runners. Yeah. Halfway. 63.40. 63.40, well, De Casella went through in, uh, in 63.48. Interesting, Salazar went through in uh, 64.10. Slower time than this again, so it's it's uh, it's world record pace. We have to watch a history in the making here with this run. I must admit, I've never seen a world record marathon. <laughs> Very few Australians would have heard. Probably worth explaining, too, that while we're using the expression world record, it's not normally applied because all courses are different and we talk about the fastest marathon ever run but uh, in strict terms we don't talk about a world record time. That's right and it's interesting to note of course Salazar broke his world record on, a, on an A to B course which is start and finish at the other end sort of thing whereas uh, the true marathon course is out and back which this is and of course in, in Fukuoka and in, in Japan it was out and back course so uh, it's probably the, the hardest way to, to run it. The A to B course is uh, repeatedly to be the, the faster because you can get good conditions, you can get a breeze behind you and um, you know you can get uh, advantages in your favour, this way it evens itself out. It's a bit of a hill there, they don't feel much in a motor car, they feel like mountains sometimes uh, when you start to get tired. Good break on the uh, field though, huh? Terrific break on the field. I wonder if it's a dangerous break on the field. Yes, um, you know, I spoke to a lot of these runners um, and uh, they all, all runners with no exception, the, the ones that I spoke to, said that they didn't think this uh, this course would produce anything faster than about 210, 211, but look at them, they're on uh, world record uh, pace, so do these boys know what's in store for them? Do they know what these hills are like? That's right, if it's a slow course and they're going out at world record pace, they really are putting incredible pressure on themselves and their ability to sustain it to Ann Street and this uh, from memory and I've been over this course myself there's quite a bit of a pinch there and steep uphill climbs and one of the first of the, the really uh, hills that are in the uh, 
on the course. Shot of the city of Brisbane, Brisbane River. Beautiful, as you say, you uh, heard there's not a ripple on that water. Conditions are really great. No uh, strong winds to contend with. Well, they're in the business end of the race now. This is where it all starts to happen. Perhaps in another five or six miles, where the pressure is really on. What a sight. Through the tunnel. Lovely loneliness to have this one. <laughs> that far in front of the field. Let's update. 66 and a half minutes down in the marathon. Two Tanzanians, Juma Ikanga in front, Gidima Shahanga, the winner in 1978, gold medalist in the 10,000 metres here in Brisbane, are at the 22 kilometre mark. They've led the field from the start, and as you can see, it's daylight second. Yes, they're through the tunnel, and the other boys haven't entered on the other side. So to start to get into the city now, the crowds in there will be enormous, and particularly around Coronation Drive. And that's going to be the best uh, vantage point for most people too because they'll see the, the runners going out towards the turn at uh, the university and then coming back. So they'll see them uh, probably uh, twice along the same, same route. Here comes the rest, of the, the rest of the field. Just entering the tunnel now. Robert De Costello on the right, Kevin Ryan in the black. John Graham of Scotland on the left and Graham Lang of Scotland in the blue singlet running between De Costello and Ryan. The challenge for the Tanzanians will come out of that bunch, almost certainly. Yes, I think the others would be uh, too far behind now to, you know, have any real threat. But, uh, of course, these boys don't look like they've got any threat either at this stage. But, uh, you know, they've got the, the hard part to go yet around, out towards the, the university, that French and Old Drive. It's, uh, it's quite a steep climb, and you feel the pinch there. Bit of a downhill run here, so actually going out along Coronation Drive, it is uh, slightly downhill, and coming back, of course, into the city, it's all up there. Mike Bratton of England, 2.33 in seventh position. Marios Castianides of Cyprus, who was with the second bunch earlier on in the event, and has dropped back to the eighth. He's in the yellow there in the background. So Hanger just seemed to have a little bit of a wobble then. Hurt, is he getting tired or was it just, uh, just my imagination? I didn't notice the climb before I was looking at the runners coming through the tunnel. The Kanga looking strong, he's on the left, another, Shahanga on the right. Another drink station runs straight past. You just That's... hope that these uh, two runners are not going into the state, uh, which is a very dangerous state, of um, running low on, on fluids. Because if they do that, that wall that they hit, the 20 or 21 mile mark, will be an insurmountable wall. Because, but then again, because some people's system a little bit different. I can remember her being Carter. Uh, I went around the whole race and didn't uh, take anything at all. Because uh, I didn't know much about marathons in those days, and uh, I didn't sort of, I didn't just seem to feel that I wanted to take anything. I didn't want to stop for anyone. And, uh, maybe if I'd taken uh, some water or, or liquid, I would have. Um, run better, but who knows? So these boys are probably the same way. They, they don't want to stop for anything. They don't want to uh, slow the pace down let these other boys uh, get closer to them. A bit of early morning fog. The conditions are, are perfect for a marathon so far. Field strung out now. More and more runners going through the 22 kilometre mark, but the two Tanzanians well beyond that now. 70 minutes down virtually, and they would have covered 23 kilometres. Let's look at these two run. Easy flowing style. Most of the time running completely in step with one another, left foot down, left foot down, settling into the same rhythm. Strange enough, it's rather hard to run at a different rhythm when you're running close to somebody like that. It's, uh, it's almost inevitable if you settle into the same gait. And one is short, one is tall, and imagine Shahanga would take a long stride. They're running along in perfect unison, perfect rhythm, as they have done for all of the race. Perfect team racing, and they're just looking at each other as they did in the team, as the two teams did in the 10K. And here they are. Starting a break on the rest of the field. Getting great support in the city. Look at that crowd, isn't it great? Have you ever seen a crowd like this in a marathon before, Herb? Not <laughs> 
Australia must be watching this marathon today. And all the rest of the world, of course, will be watching it on television. But uh, this is fantastic. It's really exciting. If they keep this place up, of course, it will become a classic. That's Can right. they? That's the question. <laughs> Big question. The gap looks to be getting wider and wider. The Tanzanians. Kanga on the right. Shahanga on the left. Has led the race since the start. And they're going in world record marathon pace. Running past City Hall, you can see the City Hall on the right hand side there, the Grace of Stone building. Oh, he said. He's feeling good. Hang I said, oh, yeah, I'm strong, I'm still strong. It'll be interesting to see if there's a break between these two. Will they still stay together and run as a team, or will, will one of them say, well, look, I'm, I think you can run fast and go for it? I wonder if Deke's starting to have any moments of doubt now, wondering whether. As Pat Gehesi pointed out, it's the second half of the race that counts. It's uh, that last five or six miles you can make up any amount of ground you like when the runners get tired, provided they get tired. The question is, will these two slow down? They don't look like getting tired yet, but you can tell. But when they do, they, their pace certainly will. I don't know how hard it is to run when, when you get to that stage. You just shuffle along and, you know, you can just lose, lose so much. Every mile seems like an eternity, doesn't it? That's right. 15 miles, 72 seconds. Well inside five minute miles. Five minutes would give them 75 minutes there. That's right. This is this is this is great race. Well again on the uh, the law of averages, you would have to expect them to really start to feel the pinch as this race wears on, because nobody has ever been able to sustain a pace like this before. No, and yet you're just never sure what these guys will do. <laughs> are you? They've uh, they've sort of created unheard of things in the world of running before and you just have always have that little sort of doubt. Maybe they're going to perform the miracle. Maybe they're going to break those barriers that uh, other people say can't be broken. Well, we put limits on ourselves. That's the trouble, you see, and this is why, you know, the, the four minute mile was, everyone said it was impossible. That, that we were limited until uh, someone like Bannister said, well, it can be done, and then everyone did it. And maybe this guy said, well, who, who should limit us to running 2.8? Why can't we run 2.5? And it's, you know, <laughs> they're not putting a limit on themselves. They're just going for it, and maybe, you know, that is possible. Was that the 15-mile sign we just saw on the right there, I wonder? Uh, as you see, a blue sign was partly obscured by some of the spectators that said 15 miles. Yes, we, 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 we've gone through the 15-mile back there. I thought you might have pulled the time a little early. It's the only reason I promised you. Even if it was, they're still uh, inside that five-minute mile schedule because we're still not up to the 74-minute mark. So one way or another, they're going pretty quick. The main body of uh, the field drifting through the city at the moment. Oh, there's a break up front. Yes, yes. Shahanga's dropped off. It's a Kanga opening up 15 or 20 metres on his fellow Tanzanian. The man who won the 10,000 dropping off, but I repeat, he kept doing that in the 10,000 metres and he kept coming back. Let's see if he does it now. Yeah, Kanga must be feeling very confident. He put his hands up in the air there just a few minutes ago and, and looked very confident. He says, I'm feeling strong and... Uh, he feels like he can go and he's not going to worry too much at this stage. He's, Shahanga's uh, paced him to this stage and maybe it's a plan. Maybe uh, Shahanga was there to set the pace and make the break. And then this boy, because uh, when I spoke to the coach, they said, we've got a faster runner than Shahanga. Unbelievable. Yes, the, the question is, did Shahanga slow down or, or did Shahanga quicken up? Really, we weren't actually watching it at the time. No, we've got no uh, marks there to just sort of give us a guide there, Herb. But it is a, quite a little bit of a break there, isn't it? He's still looking strong. He hasn't uh, altered his style one bit. how they 
when they come down from these high altitudes and come down to the lower altitudes now, their times improve so much. We've seen it before. The revolution that started in 1960 with the magnificent win in bare feet, an absolutely unknown runner called the Killer, who uh, won the Olympic gold medal in Rome in 1960. And ever since that time, it established a precedent which has been followed and created a dominance of a lot of these events distance events by African runners. De Costello back in the field. Out of our vision at the moment, we'll be today trying to break that dominance in this race. Juma Akanga leads the marathon field from Didima Shahenga. Shahenga in Edmonton in 1978 ran 2 hours 15 minutes 39, which isn't a fast time. And in saying that Kang is faster, if we relate it to that, he might necessarily be capable of running a winning time in this event. But certainly at the moment, he's setting an absolutely fantastic pace, and if he sustains it, there is no doubt that he'll win the marathon. And uh, break the world record to boot. Running along Coronation Drive with the Brisbane River on the left-hand side. Kang hasn't drop back, you know. No, he's not that, he's not that far behind, is he? He's incredible, no. this guy. Yes. Uh, that gap sort of opened up, what, probably about uh, 1,500 kilometres or 1,500 metres uh, ago, and uh, right. it hasn't really changed in the, the distance. He's, he's sort of right in there. No, you would expect that if he had a go and he went for a break, that he'd, he'd be further in front by now. So, so Hango's uh, still there, capable of getting back, and... Uh, I rode him off in the in the 10k when he when he dropped back, but uh, once he got back up with uh, the leading bunch, he certainly powered home. Of course, there must be starting to be some tiredness now creeping into the legs of the runners, and you see that gap that uh, is between the leader and Shahanga. We will see it again in a moment. Uh, whilst it looks to us, and if we were fresh, it's a gap that you could close in a fraction of a second just by burning it up a bit. Uh, when you get tired, it becomes an insurmountable gap. Doubt very much of it's at that stage yet with Shahanga. 16 miles. 16 miles. 78 minutes. Still under five minute mile pace per mile, which is still on world record uh, track. I wonder if the bunch following De Costello with that bunch is aware of the margin which now exists between them and the leaders because we haven't seen them in, in picture or in vision at all for quite some time. Perhaps they'd need, they would need somebody, I think, along the, uh, the side telling them how far behind they are. I can't see how they could. No, I don't think they know. They, they must realise they're a fair way in front, but I can't see how they know exactly how far. They haven't come around that bend yet. There have been situations where people have reached the finish line not realising that there's the pack just appearing off in the background. So they have them in sight, yeah. People have reached the finish line, uh, not aware that they were winning their own section of the race. And I think the uh, winner of the women's section in the last Boston Marathon did just that. It may have been Greta Waits leading the field. She pulled out with an injury, and the eventual winner got to the line, unaware of that fact, and uh, to her delight, discovered that she'd in fact won the event. And these boys would not know probably exactly just how far they are in front, and I can remember Cardiff, and I made a break, and I made a break reasonably early, of course, not a five-minute mile pace, but uh, I always thought the field were, uh, you know, half a mile behind me, but uh, and as I turned to run towards the stadium, I got a shock, and I, I looked over my shoulder and saw that they were, you know, 400 metres behind, so uh, never came to Juma Rikanga of Tanzania, and his shadow, Sidema Shahanga. What an incredible guy. Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen anybody run the way he runs. He's sort of, uh, he's right up there and then he drops back and it's just, uh, it's just not normal runner behaviour. Yeah. There he is, he's right back up yes, there. Yes, he's, he's, he's caught up now. There's yeah. no break between them now and he's just sitting in there. The, if these two are, in fact, getting to the point of competing against one another, it'd be totally demoralising for the bloke in front. To think, uh, OK, well, I've shaken him off. All of a sudden, there he is again. Sitting on his shelf. 24 kilometres in the background. Well, the 25k mark uh, will be coming up soon, and uh, uh, Degasella's time in Japan, when he ran that really fast marathon, was 1 hour 31.09, so uh, 
Yes, I misread that sign. It was the 24-mile mark uh, for the journey back. So where they are now, on the way back, they would have uh, a bit over two miles to run. And it looks as though De Castella might have broken away from uh, the remainder of the pack. So perhaps at this stage, a critical stage in the race, Dick is making his bid. I think he's got to soon. He can't afford to, uh, to let them get too far in front. And uh, he knows the hills are ahead. So. Listen to that support for the Australian too. Tremendous. It's a big gap to make up, Dave. I mean, if they keep this pace up, uh... It would be an enormous uh, performance by De Castello if he can catch them up. He really, in the tactics of the race that he's run at the moment, which I think are unquestionably good tactics because they are running at uh, world record pace, uh, he would have been relying, I think, on the leaders coming back to him a little bit as well as him perhaps doing what he's done now, broken away from the group to pick up the pace a bit in the second half of the race. But, uh, if these guys keep this pace up, it would be a great performance by De Costello to pick uh, these right. two fellas up. Because what they've got to their advantage is there's two of them there, you know, they're helping each other. It would be a little bit different if it was only one out there, a fair way in front. There would be a fair chance he might uh, come back. But when there's two there, they're helping each other. That crowd close to the runs. <laughs> Well, that's going to uh, help them too, of course. It's uh, inspiring them with that uh, applause as they go past. They're all pumped up. I get nervous when I see guards that close. I'm just sort of hoping that the dog doesn't run out between their legs in front of the runner or something like that. There's a dog there, uh, Herb, too, talking about dogs running out, but he doesn't look like he's going to jump out. What a great race these two are running. It is incredible. Right from the start, through the gauntlet down, set a pace that we wonder still they uh, will be able to maintain. If they do, it will be the classic marathon of all time, the world record. Well, we've got two questions to answer here, Herb. Uh, uh, can De Castella make up the gap? And are these uh, chaps uh, fearless and uh, fear no one, as their coach said? It looks that way. So you'd hate to be somebody in the eastern state sitting down watching this and knowing they've got to leave home and even have to go to work, because I wouldn't want to leave them. <laughs> 70 mile mark, and they've got, what, uh, eight odd miles to, to run. But it's a hard eight miles. Yes, yeah, you might fear no one, but after 20 miles, it doesn't matter whether you're running with a pack or by yourself, whatever, the body starts to work. It's often the body that you have to beat at that stage rather than the other runners. That's something that probably needs to be cleared up. You watch these guys for 15, 16, 17 miles and think, well, they look as if they could go on forever, but no one can. I always found when I was running these long races that 20 miles wasn't a hard race at all. Uh, but 26 miles was something different. That hill, which of course they'll have to cover on the way back, uh, Dave, that would be one of the tough hills we're talking about, I guess. Yes, yeah, so that, uh, that's right. That's just before they swing into uh, Fred Chanel Drive, I think. Was, uh, and on the way back, that's a really tough hill. I have uh, run part of the course myself. There's still a bit of fog hanging around in prison too, isn't that? That's right, so it's still quite good. Actually, they've just run past the ABC, Tim. Uh, I know uh, most Brisbane people would know where they are, but for people who are not uh, Queenslanders, they've just run past the ABC studios in Tawong. And this patch from uh, the ABC out to the university and back is much more hilly. And as you just said, they're going to strike some, some real tests of them here. And this really is the critical phase of the race. As they hit the hills, they're so far into the event now, virtually two-thirds of the way there. 85 minutes almost have elapsed. And in the next half hour or so, this marathon might be run and lost. Yes, it's, uh, it's going back that those hills are going to be the real challenge because that's when, the, that's when that... Uh, moment where the body is consumed its glycogen and stores and is starting to rely on, on the small reserves of fat these guys have to supply the energy to keep them running uh, will confront them about the same time as the hill does. Which leads to another interesting new theory on uh, dietary preparation for the event. There is a suggestion these days that a couple of cups of reasonably strong coffee 
a small hit of caffeine about an hour before the event it helps to release the fatty acids from the uh, into the bloodstream as Shahanga just starts to uh, ease off a little bit again. Well, this is the first of the really um, tough hills. Uh, Fred Chanel Drive has just swung around into it, and this is quite steep, this one coming in here and uh, here. Very undulating and uh, quite steep, isn't it? But it's, yeah, that's right. It's a short, uh, steep one. You see they're coming down the hill now, and it's coming back. This hill coming back is a lot longer. And this is really going to be the tough part. It, it was steep there, but it's only short steepness. Coming back, it's uh, it's gradual and it goes for a lot longer. So when they're coming back, that's uh, if they get past that one, they've uh, they've overcome the biggest hurdle. The uninitiated might think that the speed that you lose running up the hill, you can gain again going down the other side. But it doesn't happen like that. The extra energy that's required and is burnt up by running up a hill. Uh, you never ever get that back by the little bit you can lay off running down to the other side. The hills do take it out of you, and they take it out of you. Some of them, uh, when you're really tired, it can be like a punch in the belly. That's solid. And with sore legs, downhill running can be a problem. That's right, they've just gone up that hill and they're running down there, so uh, they're really pounding. Kangaroo in front. Him, and then a huge gap to Robert De Costella in third placing for any uh, late rises in the east, early rises in the west. The situation in the marathon is that the race has been in progress for 87 and a quarter minutes. These two Tanzanians have led the field ever since it started and they've gradually opened up a larger and larger gap. They're running on a world record schedule. Robert De Costella is probably four, five, we're not quite sure, 100 metres behind. As Robert, uh, we think, has broken away from the other bunch and uh, is a solitary runner. Um, and he, will be, he would be feeling lonely at this stage of the game. A solitary runner trying to make up the huge gap that uh, has now come about between these two runners and himself. And uh, he's at that part of the race where De Costello is at his best and where he planned to be at his best, which is the second half of the race where uh, it is really starting to get tough. He has got a monumental job in front of him if these guys keep this place up. It'll be interesting to see our next time check whether or not we've been able to, uh, these guys have been able to maintain their under five minute mile pattern. I think I just hill. saw the 18 mile sign, Herb, in the background. We're at 88 minutes. And if that was 18 miles, well, uh, they're still in front they're of the schedule. They're still on it. So the, the hills haven't, uh, haven't slowed them down at all at this stage. And they're still looking uh, quite, um, quite relaxed. I can go there. Looks uh, like he could run all day. And uh, Shahanga's just sitting in there saying, well, you know, when will I go? Tremendous crowd support and uh, full marks to the crowd for the bipartisan approach. Obviously, every Australian would love to see De Costello win the event, but uh, that doesn't mean that they're not urging these two magnificent Tanzanians on. Because you can't help but admire a champion when you're looking at two of them at the moment, by the looks of this. Shahanga seems to be making a little bit of a break on Shahanga there, Herb. Um, just uh, got a few uh, more paces in front, and is, uh, is this going to be a, a break or not? Ball Shahanga sort of just put himself back up there. He still looks relaxed. I don't know whether he saw it or not, but there was an idiot that sort of walked out so that he could be right next to the runners for his mate to take photographs of, and it's that sort of stupidity which can create havoc in this sort of thing. Runners are tired, and runners get very irritable when they're really tired. Uh, even the most complacent gentleman can get uh, really irritable at around about this point and become very aware of the thoughtlessness of people like that. That's right, this, this is, uh, that's right, Herb, but this is a break. Akanga is, uh, is making a break and uh, Shahanga is just looking behind to see how far the uh, De Costello or the next runner was behind him. So is he, uh, is he contemplating now um, second place or will he get back up there like he did in the 10? So it's Shahanga dropping off rather than uh, Akanga increasing the tempo at all. Probably impossible. Well, it's hard to know. Off. I don't know. It might be Akanga is, uh, has increased the tempo and maybe uh, he will come back. But uh, they're looking strong. Well, if it's anybody but Shahanga, probably at this point we could dismiss him as a possibility. But uh, having seen him in the past, for example, last Sunday at the track when he won the 10,000 metres, and you just can't really write the man off. But it really does look as if he's losing touch with the Kanga now. There's the uh, electronic timer, 1.30.28, 29.30, 29.8 kilometres down, a bit over 12 to go.
They're still on that uh, record-breaking pace. Seems as if they're just moving into the university grounds with the speed hump there to slow the vehicles down. So they're now into the university, Queensland. Beautiful place to run, but I'm sure these guys aren't admiring the beauty at the moment. I just wonder where these, these little humps in the road, those speed humps, uh, deter them at all. I wouldn't like to be running and run this far and having to jump over little um, things like that. Of course, they don't jump over them, they just sort of uh, stride over them. But do you think they would? Now they're going around the university ground and will do the loop. And the point you make, Dave, though, if you, if you were not concentrating on your feet and watching where you're putting your feet down, one of those speed humps uh, could be your undoing. That's right. You, you wouldn't want to be unbalanced and sort of stumble a little bit because uh, it, uh, hello, he's had his first. Would that be his first stop for uh, liquid refreshment in Shahanga also? I think they have one early, and I think this is the second one that I've seen. Them have. These guys know how to have a look at the course, so they would be aware of the existence of the hubs. One would think so. Tim Petum is in the studio here, and uh, I might just point out that. As is quite obvious that there's some fog over the Queensland University at St Lucia. We're having some troubles with our picture from the helicopter. But it is a shame for people who don't come from Queensland because this is one of the most attractive universities that you'd see around. As Herb said, it's a very nice place to run. It's a shame we can't get an aerial shot. But there's Rob DiCostello, and he knows this course. He's been up here for about a month with his wife, Gaylene Clues, and he's been running down at the Gold Coast in the heat of Queensland. He's used to it. And he told me in the preview program that he was confident that he'd be stronger than the others because he does all his strength work in training on hills. He loves these hills over the latter part of the course. And it's interesting to look at De Costello's face and compare it with the casualness and the lightness that we saw last time we got a facial shot of De Costello, which was at one of the drinking stations. The business part of the race is here. De Costello has got that concentrated and dedicated and very serious look on his face that shows that he's now making his effort. Well, we just got an indication as to the margin between them in times. Unfortunately, I didn't have the watch on it, but uh, we saw that Tanzanians reached the drink station. We saw De Costello come into the drink station. In terms of time, it wasn't all that great. In terms of meterage, it was fairly considerable. Shahanga really does this time. I think, possibly, maybe, is dropped. Yes, it looks like it. Kangas uh, has made some sort of a break here. and. Uh, uh, can he keep it up? That's the question. You know, has he gone too early? We saw the 19 mile sign. We're just over 30, an hour 33, so he's still well inside that uh, five minute per mile schedule. But surely the man must uh, feel the pinch. He's going to feel it when he turns around and comes back and hits that, uh, that uh, hill at uh, French and Elm Drive before he drops down and turns around into Coronation Drive for the, uh, for the run home concentration on his face, all resources concentrated to keep those legs moving along at the same pace. And he's got to do it for another six miles, it's still a fair way to go and as I said before, 20 miles is um, it's not so bad but that last six miles is uh, it's really the tough part. Dee Costello made a classical comment some time ago, he said that if you feel bad at 10 miles you're in trouble feel bad at 20, you're normal. If you don't feel bad at 26, you're abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kanga is at 31 kilometres. 32 kilometres is 20 miles. So uh, he's just in that zone now. Slightly over 10k to go. And I think having dropped his teammate, uh, and suddenly being there alone um, would make him think more of himself and be more aware of, uh, of uh, his own tiredness and aware of his own condition. And strangely enough, having another runner alongside you does relieve that thinking about it, awareness of your own difficulties. De Costello has thrown down the gauntlet in his own mind. He's made up his mind that he has to move out by himself. He's broken away from the rest of the marathon field and stuck with him for more than halfway through the race. And there they are, the leader and the man who wants the lead. De Costello looks quite strong there, Herb, and uh, uh, is he uh, making a valiant effort to uh, catch the leader? And uh, if he does, of course, if, uh, if he passes Shahanga, who has dropped back, that'll give him uh, a certain amount of inspiration and uh, uh, 
it would probably make him realise that these boys are tiring. They're not, uh, um, you know, superhuman after all. And he's uh, he's doing. He's running towards uh, his plan. Pat Coyce said he'd make his uh, run, you know, about uh, five miles to go. And uh, well, they're getting down to that stage now. Has he lifted too light? That's the question. And how good is uh, a penguin? Hopefully, we'll be able to fix some part of the drive along here which we can get the Costello going past as well, as well and get some sort of time check on the difference between the two of them. You know, the landmarks around here, don't you, Dad? I, I don't. Peter Mears would. He, uh, actually, Peter, I think, lives around this area, so he probably uh, has run around this uh, Let's area. Let's take that shed and take a time on it to see if we, uh, we get the Costello going past that shed. Yes, Dave, I might just chip in there that this is a very popular running area for Brisbane people. I do live just near there at the University of St. Lucia. And uh, it's a bit like the tan in Melbourne, for people who know Melbourne. Uh, jogging has become very popular in Queensland, despite the heat. And it's exactly five kilometres from that drink station we saw at the last uh, 30 kilometre mark, I think it was, uh, around this circuit of the Queensland University. It's a beautiful place to run, as you can see. There's plenty of greenery and trees, and there's the river running all the way around it. In fact, the river does a big loop, the U-bend, right around the university. And uh, there's not too many cars there, usually in the evening or in the early morning, and you find hundreds and hundreds of runners out there. But uh, if you take that, that shed that you mentioned, Herb, you might be able to get some idea on the, on the gap between them. I don't think we're going to see... Uh... I think he would be past it by now. Yeah, surely, sure. surely he's not that far back. He didn't. The minutes elapsed since we last looked at him. He wouldn't be that far behind. So Hang is still in there, you know. He is still there, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> he did it in the 10k. I, he was dropped then and he came back. You know, he's not out of the picture. Actually, there's a nasty little hill just coming up. It's not a very long one, but it's quite steep. Where well, they turn to the right and head back past a lake to the. Uh, point where they entered the university. 32k, so it's pretty well exactly 10k back to the finish. If Shahang can run that uh, 10k like he ran uh, the 10k in the games, well, of course, he'd <laughs> be, uh, be all over. Well, they've hit 32k in 137.30. 20 miles in 97 and a half minutes. Still well inside that uh, five minute per mile schedule, which would see them uh, very close to a five minute per mile schedule over 26 and a quarter miles. Of course, is around about uh, two hours, 11 minutes. Well, at the moment, they're inside that by two and a half. So perhaps on schedule at that rate for about a two hour nine, which might be just outside, but very close to the fastest run. And that being two hours, eight, 13 seconds by Salazar last year. De Costello having done two, eight, 18 in Japan late last year, shortly, about a month after Salazar's uh, fastest ever. You see there's no shadows on the ground there of the runners. They've moved into an area of patch of fog, which would be very cooling. Um, much better than having the sun shining down on your day, I think, uh, for the marathon runners. That's right. Even these chaps who are used to running in the heat um, would appreciate the coolness to be running this path, particularly at this period. Brisbane's doing everything right, even covering the sun up. Yes. That must be that hill that Peter was talking about. It's a bit nasty. Doesn't seem to be worrying this bloke very much. He hasn't altered his uh, stride one bit. He just uh, keeps going. Same, uh, same nice, easy action. Arms look strong. Legs look good. Face looks, you know, quite calm. You know, doesn't appear to be suffering any agony, but uh, it must be feeling the pain. You see. If the race is on, the race is between the leader at Kanga and De Costello, who's not in our picture, uh, or not in the same picture as the leader. We can't really sort of just see how Dick's going. It's just turning around that uh, bend now, so he's, uh, he's there and. Um, and could possibly, if he's, if he's planned his run, he could, uh, and these boys, boys tire on that long drive, uh, climb up to Fredchenel Drive going back. This is where he, uh, he could pick them up. There is a long, long way to go. Still around about six miles. The six hardest miles of the race. They're about as hard as the first 20. <laughs> probably harder. Getting close to that Even wall the traffic comes to take some climbing over at this <laughs> stage. <laughs> they feel like mountains, I think. 
can't see deep set in that picture, can we? So they've still got a nice handy lead. Two Tanzanian runners, but Dick Casella behind them in third place. 32.5 K. 33 K. Shahanga checking the watch off in the background. He's Steph been watching his touch totally. No, he's been uh, looking at his watch quite a lot in the last uh, last mile or so. So he, he's... there's Deke in the background. You can just see him now. Right. So uh, there's an indication of the gap. Looks still at, uh, about two or three hundred yards there, doesn't it? Meters. I feel it might be a little bit more, but uh, it's not insurmountable. I wouldn't worry too much about that herb. The rifle shooters still use the term yards, and that's accepted all around the world. When you're a commissioner of the Australian Broadcasting Commission, though, which is encouraging the use of metrics, it is important. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Phil McCree. Saw the Kanga have a peep over the shoulder a moment ago for about the first time in the event. I wonder if that indicated a feeling of anxiety. Could possibly uh, be, maybe... Uh... He's just thought he uh, had a little bit more of a break than that, and uh, you know, um, I wouldn't thought he would would have done that. I, I was never uh, uh, game enough to look around to see uh, how far I was in front. Because if, sometimes, if you realise you're not that far, well, you can lose a bit of uh, courage. But uh, he still looks strong and just waved and then go to the crowd. So uh, there's Dickens still on. We haven't got the two groups. Two units in the picture at the moment. Just updating for anybody who's joined ABC Sports Live exclusive coverage around Australia of the Brisbane Commonwealth Games Marathon. It's been in progress for just over 102 minutes. Two Tanzanians, Juma Ikanga and Gidima Shahanga, the gold medalist at Edmonton, have led the field from the start. It's Ikanga in front in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. You can see the margin between him and Shahanga and Robert De Costello in the main body of the screen is probably two or three hundred metres away in third placing. Kanga looks very confident. He was just putting his arm up and acknowledging the applause of the crowd and you don't do that if, you're, uh, if you feel you might get beaten. So he's, he's, he thinks he's won this race. I think in addition to the crowd, he also had a runner that was running the other way, which may have been uh, one of his teammates or it may have just been a bloke out for a morning job. They show up running around that cross, <laughs> didn't he? Yes. <laughs> one of the extraordinary things about a kanga is the, the remorseless rhythm. I mean, that rhythm that we're watching there now hasn't been broken since this race started at 6 o'clock this morning. And uh, most runners find that uh, you sort of get congealed almost in a position so that if you, if you put your arms down now, uh, it's almost as if they've gone to sleep and you feel all the circulation change and run down into your hands. And yet he's done very little in terms of changing the position of his arms, shaking them loose. Just the only, only way he breaks his rhythm is to give an acknowledgement to runners going the other way or to the crowd. Shahanga's so uh, seems to have picked up a little bit there and if he's, uh, he's there at the, at the finish with... Um with a short distance to go with that uh, speed that he's got, um, you know, he's still in there with a chance. 34k, just inside uh, 1 hour 44. Well, that's right. Deke Stella went through in 146.08 for 35k. Just uh, a little bit behind that pace now, but not all that much. So, uh, 35 um, Okay, we'll be coming up shortly. Look at Shahanga. Yeah, That's he's close uh, to <laughs> We saw him do it uh, before on Sunday, so uh, yes, he's... Uh, he sneaks up on it, doesn't he? <laughs> no doubt about it. Incredible. We didn't see De Costello at all in that picture as we got back along the straight to the hump. Um, and I, I would, if I was him at this particular moment, I would be starting to get a little anxious. Uh, having these two runners so far in front of me, I would get a little nervous, a little tense. Wondering. You do when you're running, uh, you know, uh, drop back that far and, and feel like with confidence that you could uh, get back up to the leader. You know, it's always been that once you get a gap, uh, you start dropping back. But this bloke doesn't seem to worry about that. He, you know, he just falls back and now he's up there again. He seems to have a rest or something. How, how on earth he could fall running at that place resting, <laughs> I don't know. But he yeah. seems to get a bit tired and thinks, oh, well, I'll slow down for a minute and then he feels okay again and off he goes. And there he is, running with his teammate again. He doesn't look as smooth though, does he? It seems to have more of a wobble, more of a 
a side to side sort of wobble there and uh, perhaps the tiredness of the 10,000 metres and uh, this very fast run that he's put up so far today is starting to get to him. Then, then again, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the willpower that's the, it's the big thing, you know. You know, even though your style's not as smooth and, you know, if you can, uh, if you've got that strong willpower and the strength of character and you can you know, force your way there, well, that's what, what it takes. That's what it takes to be, to be a champion. Well, maybe another about 25 minutes of the race left. Probably less on the schedule they've set. 1.46, just ticked over, 106 minutes, and uh, they're on schedule for something under 2 hours 10, so probably 24 minutes, something of that nature, remaining at this bat. So De Costello's got 24 minutes to, to bridge this gap to take the gold medal for the marathon. What a challenge. They're on their way back. It's, uh, it's a big thing when you know you're, you're on your way home. It's like... Uh, Another race altogether. You start to, to feel that the sights of the, uh, the finishing line are, uh, are not far ahead. And, uh, it's not like going away from it. You're coming back to it now. And uh, it's like the horse when he, his head is turned for home. He just sort of picks himself up and goes. Kinga had a good look then, round over his shoulder. He, he kept the head round for quite a moment to just uh, no doubt see where his competitors were. I wonder if he has De Costello in the front of his mind. Is that the person that he was looking for? He's dropped back again, hasn't he, Shane? Uh, <laughs> has he gone? Has he gone? Is he gone? At this stage, we thought he was before, but uh, he get himself back up there behind his uh, teammate. Looking strong, that'll leave that. Costello, I think, in the background. Yes, so yes, that's right. So this, this is the first time we've been able to get the three of them in one picture, isn't it? So, uh, you know, uh, he, he could be. We might have a race on our hands, Scott. I hope they don't wait till the last time they just to decide. I think the standard. Attention <laughs> really is something. Getting exciting now. A great run Deke's putting up, eh? That time should read 147. We're going for a lot longer than that. That's the time of day, I think, up there. <laughs> the time we're running in the race. And I think the crowd will really rally to De Costello if they can sense that the gap might be starting to close. And what a situation we could have here with a little over 20 minutes of running left. And De Costello, it seems, starting to close the gap between Akanga, Shahanga and himself. Are they in fetch and I'll drive now, Peter? I, I, you know the location around there. They turned out of the uh, university grounds and heading back on. Course. Yes, they're on the, on the run home now, Dave. Uh, they've finished that loop around the university. And this is the Fred Chanel drive that takes you all the way back out there. You can see the aerial shot at last. Um, they're coming down uh, to leave the university. It's uh, that five kilometre loop that I mentioned started just where that white building is. They went right out around the loop, came back again, and they're now heading home along the main uh, arterial road into um, Coronation Drive. It links up with Coronation Drive, where the ABC studios are. There's another fair-sized hill coming up. You know about that one. You saw them on the way That's out. That's right. So they're, they're over the, the really the worst one of them, and uh, now they've got just about two more side cars before they get back into the city. Well, looking strong, and she, yes, yes Shahanga's there, and, uh, just behind him. He hasn't been dropped. I thought for a moment he'd uh, drop back further, but he's uh, he's in touch. Fantastic crowd, really urging the runners on, and you can see the tiredness there. 577, John Graham of Scotland, in the black, Kevin Ryan of New Zealand, and Ryan now uh, looking as if he's running on pretty sore legs. Yes, they've uh, hit their wall, there's no doubt about that. The, the final six miles of the race will be a great struggle for them. But uh, you can't see any of that tiredness on the leader at the moment, Atanga. He's running easy, he's running loose, there's no evidence of him having hit any walls, and yet inside himself I'm quite sure that the plane will start to be, it will be starting to build up. No man can run this fast, this far, without the build up of acids and the resultant sort of stiffness and sheer tiredness that one gets in the muscles. And uh, he'd be feeling it, but he's not showing it. Defender in front, Shahanga off in the background in second position. And then a gap to De Costello. Again, we're not quite sure of the margin, but uh, it did seem a few minutes ago that it was starting to close. An hour 50 down. 
Yes, and uh, it's a great feeling to be in front when you're uh, getting reasonably close to the finish. You, you sort of lift yourself, and this crowd would be lifting him too. And uh, I'd, I'd rather be uh, in front with a gap like that than um, Shahanga with a gap like that to have to catch up. So uh, he must be uh, feeling good. Yes, I must admit, if I was Deeks at the moment, I'd be... Uh... Well, as a spectator, I'm worried anyway. Well, I think he'd be a little worried, but... Yeah. Uh, Here comes the hill. This is the big one. Well, you can't say that's slowing him down too much. He's well, attacking it. But he really is attacking the hill. That's one. right. It's quite a long one, too, you know. It's uh, the way out, way out to the university. It was There's Deke just... in the picture. Yes, he's that not that far not behind. Right. Not far behind. Wouldn't be, would be wonderful, wouldn't he, if he got up there with them? Nice to go. He's, what, what would you say that was? 100 yards, I suppose. He really has closed the gap, hasn't he? He has closed the gap. Actually, Herb, we measured it. It rises 13 metres in 200, this hill. And Peter said yeah. earlier, that's where Deke's been doing a lot of training. He's been there. He's done that. That's right. And now he's got to try and close this gap. And this man at Kanga, who's been there from the start, <coughs> has got to try and sustain it. Kanga looks around shortly and sees Deke that close to him, then, as well as the anxiety that Deke Estella will have now, can I close the gap? Of course, we'll have a Kanga thinking to himself, can I hold this lead? And they'll, they'll cancel one another out. It would be good for Deeks if a Kanga now looks around and sees him getting up closer. Well, he got over that big hill and uh, he's still looking relaxed and uh, good coming down the hill now, so that's the biggest hurdle out of the way. Looking around the river, he was not very, not very far away from the point where he'll be able to look around the river quite some distance away and see the city and at the same time see the bridge which he has to run over to get to the finishing line. Still a bit over three miles to run. They've put down, in terms of time, one hour, 52 and a half minutes. They're heading towards something like two hours, nine, which means uh, another 16 and a half minutes or so of running. That represents a little bit over three miles. Still a fair way, still time for De Costello to close the gap. Yes, we can't see De Costello in the picture. Yes, we can. He's just coming in the, the bottom of the picture there now. So, uh, he's got them in his sights. It's a long gap, though. It's a big gap. With, uh, yes, coming up to the, with the finish coming up, uh, you know, with three miles to go, it is a long gap. You know, it wasn't so long from the uh, three, four miles ago. But, uh, yeah. He's striding yes. out. He really is striding out. You can go around that bend there, so he almost has to lean over. And yet De Costello has, we're sure from looking at the pictures that we've seen, made up, uh, made up some of the distance, so he must also be stretching out and running at great pace. We're now into Gailey Road, which is an extension of Coronation Drive, so they've got the long run along the river before they get to the city. Normally a run of beauty, a run of challenge. Glide the setting into the muscles. I don't think he's uh, uh, looking at the scene at this stage. Energy starting to get depleted. Hills behind. Almost pretty flat running, I guess, from here right through now to finish. Still a little bit of a climb. It's not downhill by any means, the imagination, though, but it's just a slight slight rise, but uh, nothing uh, nothing all that much. Just probably the sharpest bench will be as they turn up and to, to round the bridge and hit for the last uh, uh, sprint home. Sure, Deke is still there in the background. So, imagine... Uh... You must remember, though, that when there's a hill, the person in front would sort of naturally come back a little bit and you make that ground up again a bit going down the next hill. There's the gap between first and second. Kanga leading, Shahanga lying second, and Dick Costello just in Just coming the around the corner. He's, He's caught. made up enormous ground. There's yeah. another hill here. Up to the bridge at Tawong and down past the ABC studios. And then that other one you mentioned, Dave, uh, over the Grey Street Bridge. Wow, well, Dick Costello is fine. Can he make it? Just under three miles to go. If he catches Shahanga, then uh, and they run together. You know they've got a they've got uh, sort of assistance then, and they might sort of the two of them might bridge the gap, and then it's uh, then it becomes uh, a, a three-man race. 
37 and a half kilometres down into Wong. Under five to go. <coughs> Marathon leader, Juma Ekanga, Tanzania. 78 gold medalist, Gidimus Shehanga, coming over the top of that little rise in second place. And Robert De Costello third, and the gap between De Costello and Shehanga really starting to close up now as De Costello moves up towards the second place runner. There's the situation. You can just see them in the main body of the screen. First, second, and third. And De Costello has almost caught Shehanga. And that must give him a tremendous surge. A lot of hard little heels sort of uh, will help him a lot, you know. He's, he's running with him now. He's, he's past him. him. He's past him. Here comes Deke. Oh, is he going? Yes, can he do it? Yes. He's got them in his, or he's got him in his sights. He's run into second position. I wonder if a Kanga knows that. Wow, Deke, you are running like a champ. Fantastic. I just didn't think in my heart of hearts with that huge gap that existed only half an hour or 20 minutes or so ago. Dick Costello had a hope of catching it while a Kanga was running the way he is, smoothly, not showing tiredness at all. Dick Costello must be really fine. A lot of control. Look, Look at this now. Yes, this is going right to be there. some race when he gets up and uh, if he, well, he's, he's got him in his sights now. So, you know, with uh, a couple of miles to go, he must be feeling good now to say, well, you know, he was out of sight before and he was a long way back, but he's caught all that distance up. Now, he looks to have him covered, Dave. The question that has to be answered is, if he has him covered, can a Kanga raise another effort and go with him? We don't if he can, we may even see a sprint to the line. This that's could right. be anything, this finish. Because that's right, and it's not not necessarily the uh, the best sprinter either, because it's the one that can uh, can sustain a sprint after uh, having covered all this distance. It's a different thing altogether than just going out on the track and, and, and running uh, 5k or 10k. And listen to that support. Look at Deke, yes, he's, uh, no he's doubt got him Deke. in his sights. It's going to be some race. There's no doubt that Deke still is running faster than a king at the moment, so the king will have to pick the pace up. Uh, if he wants to stay with Dick Costello, Dick Costello would just go straight past him at the pace he's running at the moment. They've got about two miles to go. They've put down 157, 46, 47, 48. So they'll be running now for something like uh, another 10 minutes, a little bit more. And Dick Costello seems to have a Kanga covered in the marathon. He's come from 500 metres behind at one stage and now trails by only 15 or 20 metres. And the crowd sensing an Australian victory here, really urging him on. And look at him, the big I man. I think from he's Big got Queen. him. I think he's got him. What will I can do when uh, De Costello comes on his shoulder? Will he drop or will he uh, will he carry on? This is the first time we've seen the two of them this close in a long time. So that's his stuff, dude. Yeah, look, that's looking, his stuff. looking good too, isn't he? Looking strong. Remember that he's tired too. He's he looked around. He's seen him. Now Kanga's seen De Costello on his shoulder, so uh, that must be a great pressure. A lot of pressure. And they're right on the world record schedule. If they do the last two miles in five minutes, it's around 2.8. Uh, well, Deke showing that he's no one race wonder. This is another superlative performance. But a Kanga, no doubt, knowing that Deke still is there now, trying to summon another effort to go with the Australian in the last two-mile drive to the line. But the big man looks strong. He looks good. Looks good and a slight smile on his face too. And he knows that uh, he's in there. Look at him now. Yes, he's going. He's now, going. What's going to happen here? Going to run together, or is Dick's going to have a rest? I think he'll try and go straight past Marty and establish a supremacy if he possibly can. Sort of nestling in there behind him at the moment. Kanga must be answering the challenge. Here he goes, or is he? Oh, look, yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, he's Deke going. Yeah. Front. Dick Costello hits the front in the last two miles. Come on, Dick. Come on, Dick. Performance. What a fantastic performance by the Australian, whose spirits must have been uh, well. In, in doubt at one stage when he was so far behind, but now a Kanga raising oh, Kanga. Oh, it's, he's yeah, he's going to say, I'm not going to lose this lead in a hurry. No. Look at the difference in size, too. He's throwing down the challenge. He's throwing down the challenge. Because Deep Chris would have had to uh, raise a, 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 a great run to make up that gap as he, as he sort of uh, used up all his strength. I mean, it would have taken a lot of doing. He was really running fast. Bridging the gap, but uh, can he sustain it? You know, maybe he's caught them, and, uh, and uh, that's it. You know. Well, the Kangas opened up a gap. They've gone <laughs> through 39 kilometres. They've got round about three to go, and, and Dick Costello's coming again. 
Obviously a real battle of the minds now with both trying to establish that mental supremacy over the other. And has there ever been a marathon like this? This could be the greatest finish in a marathon in history. They are both very, very tired, very, very exhausted. But they have to have this sort of a battle and sprint to the finish in a marathon like this is a challenge that is an incredible challenge. I think, oh, I think they're both trying to sort of get some sort of a break because this is where you've got to get a gap, otherwise it's a sprint home and, and you know, that could mean anything. Kanga's back in front, he's run past oh. Dekas Delta and look at him. What a race, what a race. The gauntlet thrown down to Deke, he's got to try and hang in there. We've gone over the two hour mark, we're coming up to two hours and one minute right now, so they've got about uh, seven or eight minutes to run, that's about a mile and a half, it's just a drive to the line now and a great battle of the bodies and wheels. And Dean Costello back in front. Space, uh, the, the lead's changing, chopping and changing and... Uh... Who's going to just get that break that's going to make the difference? Well, at Boston in March this year, we saw, we didn't see, but we heard about Salazar and Beardsley fighting it out. And eventually Salazar in a sprint to the line, one by two seconds. De Costello opening a bit of a gap. But a Kanga will probably come back. The support for De Costello could be the difference here. The this, crowd urging him on. This is a bigger break. This is the best break that's been made since they started to, to uh, duel it out. And... Uh, is this a winning break? Can I Kanga come back like uh, Shahanga did in the uh, 10K? Keep over the shoulder by Dick. The strain written all over his face. He's pushing his body to the absolute ultimate at the moment, getting every last bit of energy out of it with his will. Pushing tired legs, hot chest, tired arms, pushing aside that feeling of exhaustion, trying to make that break. Deke didn't expect a fast time, so he's had to run a faster marathon to win the gold medal than he thought he would. How big is the, how big is the break? We can't see can't it at the moment behind Deke, but we'll get it the shot in the moment. Yes, it's a better break now. He's getting, uh, getting a little bit uh, further away. Run is it a winning break? Is it a winning break? Let's hope so. Just about into the last mile of the oh. marathon. De Costello in front. The crowd's going wild. A second, and the crowd support for De Costello is lifting the Australian. Look at him. What a sight. 40 kilometres down. Two to go, and that gap wide. Yes, De yes. Costello pulling away. He could have the marathon won. He's got him, I think. Come on, De Costello. Come on, De. He's got him. What a fantastic performance. I think we're all getting pretty worried at about the 20 mile mark that uh, Deke hung in there. He's now in front in the last 1500 metres or so of this event. The Kangaroo off in the background, but that gap uh, being sustained by Deke Costello. Yes, he must, must be feeling quite confident now with the, with the uh, finishing line in his sights. And uh, I suppose he realises he's got quite a break. And he's running strongly. You know, he's, uh, he's keeping it up. I think he's got it. 25 miles down. The Kangas led the field for about 24. And to lose the lead at that stage, I think it would make it almost impossible for him to close a gap like that. But let's not count our chickens. It's Robert De Costello, though, in front in the last mile of the marathon Come from on, Juma Akanga of Tanzania. Well, I've never seen a marathon like this. What an incredible run by Dick Costello. So far behind, and he made it up out of such a short break distance. now, yes. He's going away. Pushing, throwing. There are all sorts of funny things happening to that physiology inside him at the moment. The body would be totally exhausted. He's been training up for this run. He wants to win it desperately. He's showing that determination. Just look at the determination on his face at the moment. Well, he's run it to plan. He said he was going to make his run with, uh, with about 5k to go. And this is what he's done. I thought he left it too late. I thought they were too far in front. But look at that, that break now. We're in the 125th minute of the marathon and De Costello has what looks like a winning break. He's up the little hill after coming across the bridge now. He'll turn and then it's downhill to the finish. It's not far away now. There's no doubt about who's going to be the winner unless there's some sort of remarkable happening here. Deeks is going to open up a great moment. Well, yes, is he the greatest is. marathon runner in the world? He's shown today that, uh, as I said, he's no race, one race wonder. He really is a, an absolute marvel. This has been a mighty performance by De Costello. The question is now, can he break the world record as well? Well, he's only got a swing around here now. <clears throat> and 
round to his left and then turn around and go down Stanley Street to the finishing line. Two hours so five, coming turns... up to two hours five twenty, so there's every chance that this could be the fastest marathon ever run. And he's not oh. wearing a watch. Over a, a difficult course, it's not, uh, yeah. it is not a fast course. If he breaks he the world this. time in this event, well then he's established himself as, without any doubt at all, as the most superior marathon runner in the world. He hasn't just done it by running against the clock. We've all seen him do it as a competitor who can win when the pressure is really on. And that's that's the big thing. Uh, that's the big thing. You know, a lot of these runners have done it. You know, just in uh, races where it, uh, there was no medals inside. But because uh, he's wanted to win that gold medal first and foremost, but to come around and win it and, and get a world record would be uh, unbelievable. 41k on the bridge, so a kilometre or under a kilometre to go now. Two hours six <clears throat> has just ticked by. And he may be just outside the mark. It'll be touch and go in this uh, run to the line. But regardless of time, what a performance by Di Costello. Well, that huge crowd that are sitting in those stands at the finishing line will get a view of Di Costello very shortly. And uh, once he sees that finishing line in his sights, you know, he's going to get up on his toes and sprint. Well, urging him on in the last kilometre of the event. We saw a kanga in the background a minute ago moment ago, but uh, the gap now is widened to the point where Di Costello would seem to have the marathon sewn up in one of the truly great performances of all time. Tactically, he ran a brilliant race, and physically, he's run magnificently over a very, very hard course and incredibly good time, yes. really stirring stuff. If he's turning around now into Stanley Street into the, uh, what we call the straight, We'll see the finishing line uh, very shortly, and uh, that's a winning break. We're into the 128th minute, the two silhouettes, Di Costello and a kanga of Tanzania, a kanga who led the race for about 24 miles, only to lose the lead to the Australian Robert Di Costello in the last couple of miles of the event. 2.7, 32, 33, 34. The fastest ever run, 2.8.18. Di Costello nearing the finishing line in the marathon. He can see it now. Yes, he can see the uh, the line there now and the crowd, and he's running, he's flying. 2.7.47, 48, 49, 50. contorted but Di Costello knows that he's got the marathon won. 208 down, 13 he's got a break. We're up to 208 now. 13 seconds. Oh Deeks. If he doesn't break it he's not going to be far away. And I don't think you really mind all that much because this has just been an outstanding performance. The time has just elapsed. 208, 16, 17, 18. Come on Robbie. Which was his time at Fukuoka. Come on Robbie. Come on Robbie. It's the world record, doesn't matter, just going to get a nice icing on top of the cake for you. Look at that crowd, too. It's going to go. Yes. There he comes, down to the finish. It's only a few metres away now. Two right. Just a hundred metres or so. He knows he's won it, yes. Saw the 42 kilometre sign up on the electronic uh, timer, a distance marker, and Di Costello in the last hundred metres or so of the marathon. There's the gap this between first and second. Yeah. And is this man the greatest marathon runner in the world? Perhaps we'll find out in the next year or so when he meets the great Cuban-born American Alberto Salazar. But Di Costello has shown us all today that if he's not the best, he's mighty at the same time. This has been a performance to remember for all time. Look the at the crowd state. cheering him on. Come on, Di Costello. They're cheering and he's running. He's responding. Look at it. Yes, well done, he's won it. Go Di. Yes, he's won it. What a great oh, he's effort. Finished. What a great effort. Race. He's done about 209.16, just about a minute slower than uh, his time at Fukuoka. What a great performance. Robert Di Costello, marathon gold medalist, the silver going to Juma Akanga of Tanzania. But the race belongs to Di Costello. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible so. run. That had all of the excitement of the 5,000 metres about it. With the last three miles, the tremendous competitive run between himself and Akanga. And uh, he showed uh, terrific uh, psychological strength in the way that he took on Akanga. <coughs> He's a very happy man. Australia is very proud of Robert Dicastella. What a wonderful. There's Pat Ploessi's case. Look at Pat. 
Oh, Pat, I think, would probably be crying at this stage. You know how emotional Pat can become, Herb. And look at the two of them there together. What a wonderful shot. Pat had promised oh. he's going to cut high on Mary's. <laughs> <voice, huh? laughs> and his wife, Gaylene. Gaylene's, Gaylene's there. Gaylene closes there. Yes. He's the king. king. Yes. He he's done king. it. He's done it. Congratulations. What a wonderful race. What a great thing for the crowd to see Robert Lee Costello come around the bend in the lead, running so strongly. How on earth, after all of that, and he really has tested his body, uh, and it will take him some days, if not weeks, to fully recover from that run. How can he look so fresh? It's hardly puffy. In fact, he's not puffy. He looks like he could go out and do it all over again. <laughs> he must be feeling an enormous sense of achievement at the moment because... Everyone knows it calls for so much physical strength, but the mental strength required in that situation when the gap was so wide uh, must have been absolutely enormous. Yes, he was super cool, wasn't he, when he was uh, lying back there. I thought uh, the gap was too much for him to bridge, but he knew what he was doing, and he, he's run the race as his coach had planned. And, uh, He must be feeling on top. Uh, Jim Maxwell's in there. We might even get a word with him, which would be absolutely uh, tremendous. Just missed the game's record, 2-9-12, set by Ian Thompson of England, Christchurch in 1974. I'm sure that would have been on a much flatter course than uh, just seen yes, that's, here. It's fantastic time for that course, you know. I was looking at probably 2-10, 2-11 at the most, but... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, please keep the road well clear. Here's the third place getter bronze medalist. I think we might have a sound problem, uh, and we might be able to get this interview. We'll hope for the best on that. And find out over the next day or two, though, what uh, Deeks had to say about it. And we'll be saying plenty about it because it really is one of the great <laughs> marathon running performances of all time. It looks like Mike Bratton of England coming in. Is he the bronze medalist? It looks we didn't, he is. We didn't see Sh uh, Shahanga come in, did we? So obviously he's dropped back. But there's the man who's won the gold. Pre race favourite. He really had to weather the storm out there. And whether it he did. This is his wife, Gaylene, and must be absolutely delighted. A true partnership, Gaylene and his wife, too. They, they work together on his athletic career. Of course, Gaylene's very accomplished as well. She'll be feeling very, very proud. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yes, it's the first time in life that I've sort of been a spectator and watched the uh, whole marathon being run like that with uh, so many ifs and buts and yes, everything. Yeah. Yeah. We just saw John Graham of Scotland coming in with a very weary looking bit of a shahanga, the gold medalist at Edmonton, with that cracking pace in the early stages really told. And he's coming in at about sixth position. He probably wonders whether his mates won the race or not. He wouldn't know. New Zealand's Kevin Ryan, who was in the group with Deke Estella early. Deke dropped them in the last 10 miles and went out and did the job solo. And right. do it, he did. So you can see here now just uh, what they're reduced to at the finish of the race. You know, like uh, these boys were looking so strong before and now they're just uh, looking like a Sunday jogger, just uh, jogging along at that place really tall. Here's Shahanga shuffling to the line. He must feel utterly exhausted. He's dropped back such a lot of distance and been passed by so many people. Now we may oh, now we, we may caught you now, apparently we missed you before. You, you can just tell tell an audience about the tactics that got you a win in this marathon today. So spectacularly, Rob. Well, Kevin Ryan, the New Zealander, and I were running together for about the first six or seven miles. And um, we were gradually picking the guys up, the two Tanzanians. And then in between about six and uh, uh, about 12 miles, 10 miles, they opened up an incredible break on us. Uh, I think we must have slowed down a bit and maybe sped it up a bit. So I really had to go out for them by myself. I am laying up. And, uh, I was working hard for that last half. It was really tough. Has this race been heavily on your mind in the last day or two? Were you worried oh, that you yeah. had to perform up to everyone's expectations? Oh, for sure. I had a lot of pressure on me. You know, going into the race with the the last few days. Yeah, yeah. Ever, ever since Fukuoka. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it makes it all the sweeter. Just 
Well, we've heard from the king, the marathon gold medalist, Robert De Costello, who has done it again. We believe the time is around 2 hours, 9 minutes, 16 seconds. Haven't got that officially, but he's run something like a minute slower than the fastest marathon of all time, 2 hours, 8.13, by Salazar. He's uh, just under a minute slower than his time at Fukuoka. All this on a course which he considered, and most considered to be a slow one, he wasn't really expecting a fast time. He's run a super time, and he's run a, an even more super race. And superlatives don't really uh, describe that effort. You deserve it, Deke. I wonder what he's drinking. Is it a champagne? Yes, a champagne being poured over his head, so... <laughs> and it's still in your eyes. I wouldn't like that very much. After what he's been through in the last uh, two hours and a bit, I don't think he'd be too worried. I think that would have to be the greatest athletic performance that I've ever watched. It really was. Uh, and, of course, uh, we must remember, too, that... Uh, uh, the viewing audience, I don't know how many millions of people saw this uh, on television this morning, but it, uh, uh, you know, it must have been one of the uh, uh, biggest crowd that's ever watched a television uh, uh, sh uh, showing of a marathon from start to finish. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing to think that we can, a lot of people can sit back in their armchairs and watch such a, a race like this all the way. Thanks very much, Dave Power, marathon gold medalist at Cardiff in 1958. Herb Elliott, who won the middle distance gold medal double in 1958 for your comments. We really hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a very unique coverage. We've shown you the marathon from go to woe. Well, it looks as if we've got the presentation coming up. And what a moment this will be. We've seen it on the track in the last few days, the euphoria, jubilation. And for a man who's won a gold medal by running 26 miles, 385 yards, in the time that De Costello has, the feeling that will uh, take over his body at this moment will be something else. Can I just interrupt there a little bit uh, uh, for a second? I, I think they're presenting with the lower weight. I, I'm, I feel sure that the medals will be presented at the stadium later on so that um, the people out there can cheer uh, De Costello. But this looks like the laurel wreath to the victor being presented out here on the actual marathon course. The chap standing next to the girl with the laurel wreath is Dick McGruther, who's got the unenviable task of being treasurer of the Commonwealth Games Foundation, but I think he'd be smiling at this stage. What a success these games have been. We had a great response from the crowd today too in lining the streets from well before six o'clock this morning to see this courageous marathon field. The Laurel Wreath, of course, has great significance in history uh, for great victories, great victors, great conquerors. And it's very fitting that it should be fitted onto the head of Robert De Costello, who we just saw prove himself to be not only the best in the Commonwealth, but reliably among the very best in the world. He's in better shape than Sidipides was. <laughs> very well back there in the studio, Peter. And he's in better shape than Salazar after, I think, his most, re most recent win at Boston. He was severely dehydrated and, in fact, uh, was receiving emergency treatment immediately after the race. Well, that crowd certainly wouldn't have been disappointed. What a great guy it's been for them. Been worth waiting for. First, Robert Costello representing Australia. Crowd's going wild out here, aren't they? Here's the battle as De Costello drew up alongside the Tanzanian, who has a peep across. Look at that. He's only 143 pounds, Tim, but he looks a monster, doesn't he? <laughs> and wasn't it a battle for about... Six or seven hundred metres as first De Costello took the lead. And Kanga came back and took the lead. And we all wondered whether De could run his race in closing that gap. 
what went through the Kangas mind as he looked around. What did he say? He looked as if he said something as De Costello came up alongside him. Look at the determination on De Costello's face. You can see the eyes closing from time to time. I'm sure that's just the sheer discomfort, the feeling that he's got at the moment, the tiredness. And here comes the that's challenge. Right. This is where he came back and actually took the lead again. So they chopped and changed here for uh, a few minutes. And then, of course, it was De Costello running away and getting right away from him. Shahanga's time, 2 hours, 14.25, finishing sixth. There it is. They're not going to have the lead back again. <laughs> this isn't going to be easy, Deke <coughs> Stella. I'm going to make this tough for you. Well, this was where we won and really had Deke uh, put too much into that uh, supreme effort of trying to catch the leaders. But uh, at this point here, these, the gap's opening, and I was wondering to myself, and Deke's look, look at the look on his face. He's looking really tired and gritting his teeth. And I thought, hello, has he gone? Is he going to be able to come back again? That was at 39k. There's the sign in the background. 3k just over to go. And Deke Costello, after grabbing the lead, had lost it. And that's a time when you've really got to summon all your resources. Yeah, at this point, it could have gone. De Costello could have thrown in the towel at this stage if he hadn't been so mentally strong. He's gathering up, summing up his energies, his resources, and he's not going to let it go like that. It had everything, didn't it? It was just as though it was uh, staged, you know, the, uh, those two uh, Tanzanians out in front, De Costello seemingly in, uh, in a possible distance behind them, catching them up and then uh, getting the lead and then sort of losing it for, uh, you know, a couple of times. And uh, it looked like it was all pre-rehearsed uh, just to uh, make it interesting for the crowd. But believe you me, those boys hadn't gone through any rehearsals. You see the eyes closing of the athletes. That is about the only expression we're seeing of the ultimate tiredness and the near exhaustion of these people. We don't the see crowd urging to go. He's trained every day for the last five years. Hasn't suffered serious injury, and that's a big factor, isn't it? Point well worth making, because uh, he's one of the few marathon runners who has been fortunate in that regard, but and it's not just luck. There's a lot of uh, common sense and thought goes into the preparation, and because of the common sense and the planning, De Costello hasn't had the injuries. Well, he's had good advisors in uh, Pat Coessi, Dick Telford, uh, and of course, uh, he's got a sensible outlook on it, and all these three things uh, uh, make for uh, a much more relaxed and uh, uh, injury-free uh, running. And uh, we've seen a lot of good runners that have uh, uh, fallen by the wayside just because of injuries and pushing themselves too hard when uh, they should have been resting a little bit. Just deep making the pass again. Grab the lead for the second time. That was a stunning battle over about a kilometre. And from this point on, there was only one man who was going to win the marathon, De Costello, opening the gap, which gradually increased to the line. And if those feet hit the ground a thousand times each 1,500 kilometres, they've hit the ground 26,000 times or thereabouts from the time we saw the start at 6 o'clock this morning three times their own body weight, pushing down on the, the feet, the legs, the joints, the jarring, right up through the spine. It really is quite a pounding that the body takes. 26,000 times that happens on each leg throughout the race. Sorry, the leg did change again. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> I think we were that excited. We, it's hard to recall just how many times they did uh, swap the, the lead there. But uh, that's right. Uh, Okanga wasn't going to uh, lose his marathon easy. He wasn't going to uh, throw the towel in. But uh, Rob certainly showed a lot of uh, power, willpower and guts here to uh, power his way back to the, uh, to the lead and then finally get away towards the finish. You can see he gathered up the determination, he's gritted his teeth here again. Here he goes again. Could have easily uh, sort of said, well, you know, it's too much for me, I can't do it again, and drop back and be content to run into uh, second place. But he wasn't contented, he wanted that gold medal. Good on him. Oh, it's a mark of a true competitor to have that challenge thrown down. One had to weaken, and it wasn't Deke Costello. At this point, the lead was about to change for the last time in the event. But what a phase of the race this was. We thought the first 
two hours was exciting, but this particular period in the last 10 minutes of the race was just something the like of which none of us, I don't think, have ever seen. Hello. We think <laughs> at the front, and I think in a moment we're going to see him actually power to the line to take the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games Marathon for 1982. That was fascinating television coverage, though, to watch that little sequence that we saw because it was the break point of the race. One of those runners had to break, and we're watching a very, very critical stage of the race in slow motion there. To me, Mr. Galbraith, what should be on our screens? That's right. That's where the, the race was uh, won and lost in that particular crucial moment. A crucial few moments. And here are the last few metres for Robert Di Costello. Almost at the line. The gold medal in his grasp. After 26 miles, and at this stage, about 350 yards. Look at the length of his stride at this point of the race. You saw the tiredness of those that came in afterwards, almost shuffling. There's no shuffling there in Deke's uh, leg extension. Pushing along with great power and great bounce. Look at the head rising. A lot of power, a lot of strength. Yeah, still keeping uh, perfect rhythm and style. And it's not, uh, it, it's, it's the well-trained body. Probably significant, Dave, in this uh, modern marathon running era, that the last couple of major marathons, this one and the Boston Marathon, have both resulted to, or seen results decided in the last mile or so, whereas once upon a time they were often decided a bit earlier than that, but uh, such is the competitiveness of marathon running at the top level now. Well, there's so many uh, top marathon runners around now that uh, it's getting to the stage where uh, you're going to see finishes like this because uh, there's a lot more coming up and there'll be a lot more Australians now that are going to uh, be inspired by this race and who knows, uh, you know, we're going to get someone that might eventually break uh, that world record. If it's not Deke Costello, it might be another Australian. De Costello has told me that he believes there is a lot of potential for improvement in uh, marathon running times and he feels that the time could be reduced fairly rapidly or relatively rapidly over the next few years. Well, I remember uh, De Costello before uh, he ran in Japan in that great race in Fukuoka was advised by Suri Chinoy, who's a great uh, guru of marathon running. He said, told De Costello he had the possibility of, of running two hours, seven minutes. He said, uh, uh, he said, don't limit yourself. He said, don't put a limit on yourself. And uh, he knows he, he may eventually run two hours seven or five. Great stuff, Deke. The gold medalist Look in the marathon. Look at that smile. Look at that uh, sheer joy of, of winning his gold medal. There's agony there too, but it's the joy of winning it. Look at it. Six mile one's a good, Dave, but uh, oh, marathons right. are probably even more satisfying. This is the race, you know, you've got to say, this is the race. I can't see anything taking away from this as being the race, the coverage and everything has been just absolutely fantastic. A few stragglers coming in, they're not really stragglers, that's an unfair term to use. They've been running uh, for just under six. That's true, sorry. <laughs> There it is, Michael Grattan of England took the bronze. 2019. Time we have is 2.9.18, which is exactly one minute slower than Deke ran at Fukuoka last year. But this, Deke said, was a tough course on which uh, he wouldn't really expect a fast time. Well, 58, Dave showed tremendous courage. I saw his feet, and they were just covered in blisters. Gaylene Clues herself, a representative yes. of Australia at cross country before she struck an injured knee. Well, Robbie's had that shower and changed and he looks quite fresh there. There he is. See, I almost got in the act there. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly met the PM. Actually, he was in our studios the other day and we had the Duke in here. It's been a marvellous experience, but here's Dee Costello with Tammy Fraser and the Prime Minister. Dan Whitehead, the General Manager of the Commonwealth Games Foundation. He looks fresh, he looks good, he's obviously very happy, but uh, he's come up well. He really does, it's uh, certainly uh, looking at him walking down the straight moment. and realise he's just gone a uh, superhuman effort. Deke wears the laurel wreath, the marathon king at the Commonwealth Games for 1982. Two hours, nine minutes and 18 seconds. After bridging a gap of something like five, six hundred metres in the last five or six miles of the event. <coughs> Truly great performance by 
a man who Ron Clark described as Australia's greatest ever athlete after his performance at Fukuoka late last year. Yes, that'll be an event, the one we've just seen will be one that I remember for the rest of my life. It was, uh, it was a classic run. Yes, I think there's going to be a lot of people that watch it today uh, on television that are going to say the same thing, you know, well, you know, will we ever see the like of that again? Here he is, showered, pressed, cool, wearing the victor's wreath, and there are competitors still running in, no doubt, who are just completing the course. It's just how superior Robert De Costello of Australia is to a lot of the marathon runners, not just in the Commonwealth, but around the world. And he doesn't get a cent for it, whereas if he ran as a professional in the States or in Europe, he could make something like $10,000 for a run like that. Yes, the Mark McCormack organisation's business signing up marathon runners at the moment, seeing it as uh, with international satellite hookups for marathon races around the world and a world marathon circuit, and it becoming a, an absolute sort of professional extravaganza. It's, uh, it does grab the public imagination so strongly. Yes, I would be out seeking for uh, Deka's uh, uh, second show, I would imagine, to uh, uh, some uh, great uh, contract, but uh, I think Deka will uh, be around to run as an amateur in uh, Los Angeles in two years' time, because I'm sure he would love to follow this one up by winning a gold medal in the Olympic Games. That's it. That completes our coverage of the Commonwealth Games Marathon. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sure you have. Great win to Robert DiCostello.